Markets are lower this morning. The Federal Reserve taper has been the focus all week on Wall Street. Take a look. Dow Industrials down 143 right now. Joining me right now to talk about that and how to allocate capital is Wealth Consulting Group CEO Jimmy Lee, also joining the conversation all morning long this morning. Fox Business is Dagan McDowell and the Wall Street Journal's assistant editorial page editor, James Freeman. Great to see everybody this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Jimmy Lee, kicking it off with you on this worry this week where things really did get elevated on the uh, potential taper that we're all expecting from the Federal Reserve later this year. What did you hear from the Fed? Is this nervousness warranted? Uh, well, I think it's a good idea, actually, that the Fed's uh, announcing the taper now and uh, getting investors prepared for it so that it doesn't really shock the market as much as it could. In fact, I think the real risk, Maria, is if the Fed uh, waits too long, and especially with interest rates, um, gets behind you know, schedule here and has to raise rates later on too quickly, that would really, in my opinion, have the biggest impact uh, against the stock market. And that's really the biggest risk I see. So the Fed announcing now, I think, is good. And I don't think investors really t should be too concerned about it because it's something that we need to have happen soon and uh, expected. So are, is the backdrop in place in terms of where we are in this recovery to start lifting interest rates? Earlier in the month, I spoke with J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, Chairman and CEO Jamie Dimon on the topic, and he said where unemployment is right now, he's not expecting a move. Listen to what Jamie Dimon had to say on the Fed's plans. Watch. I think they've made it very clear this time they're not going to do that. They're going to wait until they see the actual white of the eyes. I think they haven't been this explicit. I think the white of the eyes is 4.5% unemployment, uh, wages going up, jobs plentiful, uh, and they're less concerned about inflation. They want to see growth. Remember, we're coming out of a great crisis with this pandemic. So, Jimmy, right now, unemployment is at what? Above 5%. Jamie's saying they're going to wait to see the whites of the eyes. That white of the eye is 4.5% unemployment. What do you think in terms of when the Fed really gets going here? Well, I'm assuming it's going to happen later on this year based on, on what, the, what the minutes uh, said. But uh, as Mr. Diamond mentioned, uh, it would be good to see the, you know, more healthy economic data come out. But, I, but it really, it's about how much uh, they're going to, you know, reduce uh, the bond buying and, and how fast. And so we don't know that yet. And I think uh, that's yet to be seen. But again, signaling to investors that it's coming, I think, you know, publicly is a good thing. We'll be talking about it for a few months before it actually starts happening. So I think as, as I've heard the term, uh, a little bit of fati information fatigue on that. It might not be as big of a deal to investors when they stu do start doing it. And uh, we'll just, the unknown is how much and how quickly, and, and that'll dictate how the market reacts. All right. Well, let me ask you about China and investing in those companies. Uh, China passed one of the world's strictest data laws overnight, allowing China's central government to control how lower-level agencies use and share data. The Chinese regulators also reportedly considering making companies hand over their data management to third-party firms in order to be listed in the U.S. Look, we understand that the CCP is going to get whatever data it wants. What do you think this is going to do to further uh, thoughts about investing in Chinese companies? And what about all these American companies that are operating right now in Hong Kong and getting ready to open shop in China? Well, it certainly shocked uh, the Chinese tech market. Uh, you know, the big technology names are down uh, a lot off their highs. And so I think there's a, a, you know, continued uncertainty around certainly Chinese tech. And it's not good for the companies that are wanting to do business over there. The U.S. US companies really haven't been affected quite as much. But uh, our companies that depend on China for a lot of their revenue, it's going to be a big deal. And so there's more to yeah. come on this. Um, and I think it's not going to get better, but probably worse. But it also probably sets up some buying opportunities for certain names that investors might see value in now, as some of these names have, have dropped back down uh, way off their highs. And so it might create a buying opportunity in the long run. And w let's see uh, how, you know, companies really, you know, change or, or you know, change our business model in terms of uh, adopting to this. And, and hopefully everything will work out OK, because China represents a huge market what? for these tech companies. Yeah, well, uh, China is now poised to add an anti-sanctions law 
to the Hong Kong charter. This move allows authorities to hit back on foreign critics. Uh, the law would lead to bifurcation of Chinese and U.S. operations. Uh, it looks like it's, uh, it's only getting uh, tougher in terms of the China crackdown on business. Jimmy, how are you allocating capital right now? Well, certainly China is a part of an uh, international overseas allocation for our clients. And I think it is important for U.S. investors to have uh, proper allocation to international stocks. Um, valuations in some areas, uh, such as Europe, seem better in terms of uh, not as expensive as maybe the U.S. And as the COVID situation gets better uh, internationally, you know, I think that uh, returns will improve overseas. And so I think investors need to be prepared to have, uh, you know, their portfolios allocated towards international if they haven't already. We do. Uh, we're still more bullish on the United States than in overseas markets, including the Far East. But we think that having international stocks uh, is a great idea, especially in the next two to five years. All right. We will leave it there. Jimmy, great to have you this morning. Thanks very much. We'll keep following all of that.